Hey guys, we're going to get started here in just a little bit, diving into Google Drive for creative design and also productivity. What we're going to be covering is things that uh, I think that many people just seem to scratch the surface of. So I want to take you a little bit deeper and show you how you can really create some beautiful things with Google Drive. Uh, Google Drive is a, a suite of applications, way more than just cloud storage space, but it is also that as well. So it can be a beautiful ecosystem where everything can live, uh, as well as collaboration can happen. Uh, so I, I really enjoy using it, and I want to show others what I do with it and what you can do with it too. So we're going to get started here in just a couple of minutes. Thanks for watching. If you wouldn't mind taking a second and sharing this video with somebody that you think would benefit from knowing a little bit more about Google Drive, whether you want to create your own documents that look really professional, really slick, uh, beautiful, <laughs> or, uh, or just want to dabble a little bit more or be more productive. Hey, everybody can save a little bit of time, and the more time you have, mm, the more things you can enjoy. So uh, hey, share this with somebody that you think could benefit from any of those things. I'm particular, uh, interest, particularly interested in reaching out to students, educators, uh, anybody really in, in school, uh, Chromebook users, uh, creative types, anybody who wants to, to uh, do some graphic design and on, on, on the cheap uh, and actually for free, anybody who has access to the internet. So um, those are my particular people I have in mind for for this video. We're going to be talking about images and all the things you can do with images. We're going to be on for about 15 or 20 minutes. So share this with somebody, please. And thank you. All right, guys, thank you for joining me for diving into Google Drive. I'm your host, JP, and we're going to go under the surface here just a little bit of what is available in Google Drive. Google Drive is, uh, a lot of people have known it for as cloud storage, and a lot of people know about Google Docs, but I want to show you specifically Google Slides and Google Drawings and what you can do with both of those applications. Google Docs is awesome as well, and we're going to get into that in this series. So this series really is to take you a little bit further, show you a little bit more things to, to polish your uh, your documents. You want to make documents and make them look great. Uh, so I'm, I'm interested in showing business people, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, uh, small businesses, big businesses, any, anybody who can benefit from saving time, saving money, being more productive, and looking great while doing it. That's who I'm talking to. Also, creative types, uh, whether you're a, a graphic arts student or, uh, or an educator. Uh, Google Drive is a great ecosystem that you can live in, uh, store files, share files, collaborate with others, and create beautiful things. So let's get started. We're going to jump right in here talking about what you can do with images in Google Drive. All right, so here we are in my Google Drive. This is just my home folder, and I've got several things in here right now. And what I want to jump into is uh, we're going to start with with uh, Google Drawings. Google Drawings is like, if you want to have one canvas, uh, there's some benefits of using drawings over slides. Slides uh, obviously is made for presentations, but you can also use it for multi-page PDF output, multi-page documents, etc. I like to use it a lot for iterating because I can just add an another slide and continue creating things, just brainstorming ideas. It's object-based uh, layout. So anything on the page you can just pick up and move somewhere else. There's shortcut keys for moving things forward and backward. 
lots and lots of stuff we're going to get into in this series. But in this particular video, we're going to be on about 15, 20 minutes or so. I want to show you some things that you can do with images. So here I am in my Google Drive uh, home folder here. I'm just going to right click anywhere in this gray space, or you can go up to here. This uh, button now is a blue. It used to be red where it says new and you can drop this down and you'll find Google drawings in here. We're going to start with a Google drawing. A lot of people may have seen me online doing time-lapse uh, videos of my vector portraits. I use Google Drawings for that. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to show you how we can use photos and manipulate them and use them in a design. So the first thing I want to do is set up my page. And I'm just going to pretend that uh, I want to create a flyer, just an 8.5 by 11, just a U.S. standard printer paper size page. And so I can do that under the File menu. Drop this down, go to Page Setup. You're going to see this a lot because this is the first thing that I do. If you don't do it first and you want to go back and change your aspect ratio or the dimensions of your page later, it's going to want to stretch everything on your screen. I have a workaround in case you have that issue, but we'll get into that later. So um, at the end of this sort of presentation, um, I'm going to take uh, questions from the chat. So if you're in the chat, go ahead and start leaving your questions and I will look and, and make sure that I answer as many questions as I can. If you have run into any issues using any of these applications in, in Google Drive, I want to answer your questions and uh, do my best to help you out here. So, okay, we're in page setup. That was under the file menu. I'm going to custom and I'm going to make sure it's on inches. And right in here, I'm just going to put in 8.5. That'd be 8.5 by 11. And I'll get my very familiar aspect ratio, printer paper, US standard size. All right, next thing I can do is just give it a name. I, like, I don't like having a whole bunch of untitled drawings around in my Google Drive, so I like to give it a name. And this one I'm just going to call... Uh, we, did, we did a flyer, kind of a flyer... Um, in a, in a video I did, it didn't do it live, but in this in this playlist you will find uh, a, a a video on how I made a flyer using Google Drive. So we're going to kind of do that, but I want to show you. I'm going to get it a little bit more specific with the images. So I'm just going to call this flyer example. Okay. All right. Now, there's a couple of cool things that you can do inside drawings, and you can, almost everything translates into slides as well, all the same functions. Drawings gives you this checkered pattern, which gives you a transparent background. So if you wanted to export anything like a PNG that man maintains a transparent background, use drawings instead of slides. But I can right click, and you'll see background, and I can just change the background color. And I might want to do that. I'm just going to make it white. I think I have white paper. I'm just going to have some white paper here. And uh, I want to show you a couple of things. There are several ways that you can get images into your documents. You could do it from a, a file that you have on your computer. So, for example, maybe I'll create a uh, little bit of a, a header here for this uh, Melon Fest. This is already passed, but you get this idea. I just dragged it right into the document right into my, my browser window here, and it plops the image right in there. And as you saw, this is, like I said, object-based layout, object-based design. I can move this thing around. If I grab one of the side handles, it's going to squash it. I really recommend not doing that. So I'm going to just go do a Control Z to undo that. If you want to resize something, grab one of the corner handles, and you'll see it, it maintains its proportions so that you don't get this squashing stuff going on. That gets really ugly really fast. It'll work the same way if I grab this, uh, the right or left side handles and see I can squash it that way. Don't do that <laughs> unless you absolutely have to for some strange reason. Make more room for something another way than squashing images and text, by the way. Again, I'm a designer, so I'm going to give you design tips throughout this entire series. All right, so that's one way of just getting an image into your document. Another way that you could do it is from the Insert menu. That's right up here. Insert Image. There it is. And this is going to open up uh, a little bit, maybe a f more familiar uh, dialog for you to grab a, f a file from your hard drive. And you see I can drag it right in here. So let me try that. I can do that here. It's going to do the same thing. Okay. It's going to upload it. There it is. Just another way of getting it in there. 
or if I go to insert image again, you can see I can also hit, click this blue button that says choose an image to upload. And I can grab that image once more just to show you all of the different ways of getting an image from your hard drive into your document. I think the easiest way is just to have have a, a, a floating uh, finder window or a Windows Explorer window here and just drag it right in. It just fast and gets it in right. It, it gets it in there just very very quick quickly. Um, if you have any problems with that, leave a question or a comment in the chat. Okay, so let me grab that image again. Okay, and let's see, what else can we do? How else can we get images in here? Can we get them from the internet? We can. Uh, we can also use, this is something I use a lot, is go to in the insert menu again, choose image, and you see there's some other tabs up here. There's some other ways of, of finding images. They don't just have to be uploaded images. I could take a snapshot, and this is gonna ask me if it wants to use my camera. It, I'm currently using my camera, so I'm not going to do that. But you could actually take a picture with your webcam and upload it that way. Very cool. By URL. So here's an interesting thing. I'm going to go to one of my favorite sites for beautiful high-resolution photos. That's Unsplash. And let's just uh, grab something here. That's kind of cool. So I'm going to right click and say copy, well, let's, let's open it first, okay? And we can, uh, we may have to download this, download this uh, file. But these are free for anything that you want, uh, high resolution images, which are fantastic. And what I wanna show you is, if I can, if I can do it, If you find the URL for any image, you can copy the uh, the link address for that image. Let's see if this will work. And paste it right in here. There it is. It shows up right there. So any URL. So that could be from like your, um, anything that will give you the URL. If you wanted to use something like from your Instagram, as, as long as you can copy that URL or from Facebook, you don't actually have to have it sitting on your hard drive. So this could come in handy for Chromebook users or people who, it's just actually kind of faster. I don't have to download anything and re-upload it. I can just grab it from the URL, paste it in here, hit select, and it's going to insert that high resolution image right into my document. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to use that. Match it up to here to my document. Now, um, let's do a couple of other things that we can do to get images in here. So I'm going back to the insert image menu. You can insert from your albums. So these are albums that are on your uh, G uh, or, or your Google Plus, your Google Plus account. So if you use um, Google Photos, which I also highly recommend, uh, you'll, be, you'll be able to find stuff here. Any albums that you've, that you've created in your Google Plus profile, you can have access to here. Uh, also from your Google Drive. So anything that is stored on your Google Drive account, you can also search. So I've got some wallpaper somewhere in here. And these are sort of material design-esque wallpaper. So you can see I can find those images. I have one selected here and I can insert it that way as well. So this is inserting an image from my Google Drive storage. Another really cool thing that you can do is, again, insert image and go back here. If you get into here and you don't know how to get back to where those other tabs were, see this little button right here, return to return from Google Drive. I take you back here so that you're back at the upload, take a snapshot, etc. This last one here on the right is search. Hi, Larry Stewart. Thanks for watching. Uh, he says, uh, I'm, I'm just going to call you out right now. We may be a little bit longer than 20 minutes, but uh, I think this is really important. He says, thank you for pointing that out. I think this was earlier he was talking about. There was a little bit of delay, guys, so don't think that I'm ignoring you if I don't uh, get it right on time. 
It says, thank you for pointing that out, Joshua. I have, I have seen so many examples of the distortion in print. Yeah, he's talking about the squashing. Like I've shown you how you can squash images. Don't do that. Don't squash text. Don't squash images. It looks bad. It looks very amateur, unprofessional, and quite ugly. Fonts are carefully crafted. You don't want to mess those up. You don't want to squash them. They look they look terrible when you do that. Uh, images as well. You don't want people looking squashed uh, or any image for that matter. So um, in most programs, you can hold shift to maintain those proportions. You could do the same thing if you're using word art, which we'll get into in another video. Anyways, don't squash stuff. All right, so here's a search. Now you can see this right here. It says this is different than just Google image search. Okay, it's already filtering. It says results shown are labeled for commercial reuse with modification, which means that anything it gives me in this search, not just Google search, this is different. This is already filtered. Uh, will be able. I will be able to use without fear of repercussion or whatever. Uh, I still would recommend being careful. Don't use something that's really recognizable. Don't use somebody's artwork uh, or something that's very commercial anything from Disney or Marvel or anything like that. Don't do that. That's why I recommend Unsplash. They're very specific about uh, those images on unsplash.com being used for anything you want for give charge. So I'm, I'm just recommending them because they've, they've been uh, providing that service for a very long time. Lots of photographers all over the world contribute to that blog, uh, and it's just great. They put out books. There's other ways that you can uh, donate and contribute to them for... The, the great work that they do anyways so this is a google image search that is pre-filtered inside of google drawings and you can find this menu as well in other uh, google drive apps so from the insert menu go to search and i can search gur uh, gur gurgle i can search gurgle i can search, search live or stock images um, and i'm going to search gur <laughs> that's hard to say i'm going to search google and uh, let's find maybe a, a bird and just see what it gives us. So here's all kinds of birds that, that I can use. I can use these. Uh, so I can grab any of these and it's just gonna do the same thing that I've been showing you. So I'm gonna grab this one, hit select, and it's gonna plop it right into my document. And I wanna point this out. You can move things off of the canvas. This is one of the most valuable things in any program. It's a, like a pasteboard, being able to move things off the canvas and get to them later on. Uh, I can just have this on the side. I might want to use it. I might not want to use it. I can just have it over here. And if I export this as an image, nothing outside the canvas area, which is this white space here, will actually get exported with it. So I can store these things in the file and use them later on, pull them in if I want them, or get rid of them if I don't, or just leave them there. It's really, really handy. All right, looks like we're, we might be buffering, but uh, hopefully that'll catch up here in just a second. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, hope you're enjoying this. Hope you're getting something out of it. So we're working with images here, all right? All right, so we've got images in here. There's lots of different ways, like I showed you, to get your image in here. Easiest way to get it from the hard drive is just drag it from your uh, file explorer window, whatever that is for you, right into your browser window with Google Drawings open. Uh, you can do it from URL, you can do it from a Google search inside of the drawing. Don't, do, don't just open a new tab and do a Google search unless you're filtering stuff for uh, reuse uh, with, with the license stuff. Uh, you don't want to get uh, in trouble, and believe me, it does happen. Okay, so other things you can do with images. Double click, and you'll get this interesting thing. There'll be these black bars on the inside of the image. This is your cropping feature. It's really, really powerful. It's really fast, it's really slick, and it's kind of hidden. You double click on the image, you get your cropping. And if I if I drag the black bar, I, I start to crop it. And you see how this goes to semi-transparent here? So this is really, really cool. If I wanted to create a cool header here, I could do that. Uh, so the black handles is for your cropping, and that's okay to uh, to change it's not going to squash the image as long as you're grabbing the black handle now inside my cropping if I grab the blue handle these little blue squares and start dragging those it will start squashing the image still 
uh, also while I'm in my cropping area. So I've just double clicked. To get out of this, you just click outside here. So I'm going to double click back in here when you start seeing the rest of the image that's spilling out of the cropped area. You can drag and move this image inside this crop uh, frame. Okay, so I click back out and I've got a new composition for my photo. Really, really, really cool. I like, I really like uh, the way that this does uh, cropping. Uh, Select an image. Here's another thing. We're going to wrap this up pretty quickly so I can get to any questions that anybody might have. I want to make sure I answer anything. Uh, Ray says, great work, Joshua. Appreciate you sharing your techniques. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for watching and sharing this with somebody else that you might think would benefit from it. Excuse the noise. If you hear some banging, uh, we have neighbors moving in upstairs, a new business right above us, uh, which is awesome. They're, they're, it's going to be very, very cool, but that's what that noise is. Okay, so with an image selected, I've got these, I'm going to go right up here to my toolbar. There's image options. Image options opens up this panel on the right hand side. And there's some more things I can do with images. Really cool stuff. Really cool stuff. This is not like Photoshop pixel editing. Okay, I'm not going to be cutting things out like an outline of, of, of somebody. But I can do some really cool cropping things, and I'll show you that in a second. These are things that have to do with the tonal quality, the color, the brightness, the contrast, and you can kind of do a color cast or a recolor on your image. So that's the first thing is called recolor. And if I drop that down, it gives you kind of a preview of all these different color variations. It's like a color cast over your photo. If you wanted to do something, now these are pretty uh, extreme. So I'll, ch I'll choose this purple one. You can get some cool uh, effects this way if you're going for something like that, but it can also be kind of crazy. Um, there's just black and white. Black and white can be really elegant, really slick. If you wanted to just do grayscale, that one's down here. There's also sepia or sepia. Uh, and that's also a pretty, pretty common one that I use a lot. So I use the grayscale a lot. I use, I actually don't use sepia that much, but it's there. Um, Invert, I might use this on textures for some reason. So anything that's black, it will make white. Anything that's white, it will make black, and it will do the same thing with colors. So let me choose this bird here, and I can do the invert. You see it does the same thing. Now it does also convert it to grayscale and invert it, which is kind of strange, because that blue would actually turn orange if it was stained in color. If you don't like any of those things, just go to your uh, drop down here right under recolor, and choose no color. Larry says, hi again, Joshua. Does the program use layers? If you want to place text on an image, is it on the same layer or is it a different one? Uh, great question. I wish that there was actually a layers panel, but there's ways around that. Uh, actually covered that in the flyer that we made in the previous Dive into Drive video. Uh, and I'll get to that in just a second. Ray, uh, in previous videos, he's stated that there's no layers feature. Okay, he's answering my question. Thank you. Thanks for moderating that, Ray. Thank you. Very much appreciate that. Uh, no layers panel, but there's workarounds. Okay, so I can group things, and I do that all the time. I think about where I have things in the, the hierarchy, front, forward, and back, okay, overlapping things. Let me get rid of that negative thing. So I'm just going to go up here to drop down and say no recolor. So we just got these two images in here. Uh, let's see what else can we do. Here's some other things. Transparency, that's pretty cool. So here's something that I do a lot. Sometimes this is too much. Uh, Larry, great. Uh, that's I, I'm really glad you actually brought that up about putting uh, text on an image. I want to take this content where you guys want to want to go. Um, <coughs> so here's what I do. I use that pasteboard a lot. I drag things off the canvas so that I can put things underneath and build up my hierarchy of layers this way. So I just pulled in a square here. I'm going to get rid of the border and maybe make this color something um, blue. Okay, so I just chose a blue there and I'm just going to drag this out until I get my blue guides. Those blue guides, those are really, really handy. Uh, they, they let me know that it's the same height and width of something else and that's what I want to do so this blue shape here you see right now it's on top of my image I'm gonna do a control shift and the down arrow that moves it to the back you'll find that under the arrange order 
uh, send to send a front, send forward, send back, send, send backwards, send to back. And there's all the shortcut keys on the right hand side of these drop down menus. This is one of the most valuable things to me because I forget these a lot. Um, and just the, a refresh of seeing what those are control shift up and down uh, or just uh, control and up and down will move them uh, incrementally rather than all the way to the front and all the way to the back. So for example, uh, if I wanted to have this image behind the bird but in front of the blue square, I could just do control down. You see how these layers are starting to happen. Alright, so what I want to do is, is just plop this image of the city right on top of that blue square and go over here to the transparency slider and start sliding this up a little bit. This is different than giving it a color cast. Uh, or a, a recolor. See, if I recolored it blue, it just makes everything this this bright, bright blue. I don't want that. I want it to be subtle. I want it just to have a little bit less contrast and kind of everything kind of start going a little bit blue, but not, not so crazy. Uh, I do this a lot to help my text stand out a little bit more. Sometimes there's just too much contrast in an image, uh, too, too, too many darks and too many lights for the text to stand out. So I do this a lot. So now that I have these two pieces here, see how I can, I can't, now I can't select the, the blue one here unless I move this off. Uh, and if I wanted to, to move these together uh, continuously, I could just select both of them and I can do that with a, a lasso select and do a control alt G. That's going to group that. So this would be like my header image. I still have access to both of these things. So if I wanted to get into my cropping and, and reposition uh, this photo, I can still do that even though they're in a group. Okay, which is pretty cool. And, uh, and this gives me a little bit more contrast than the original photo did to put in. I'm going to use word art, so I'm going to insert word art, and I'm going to type in header Okay. And I like to use something usually bold for my header text. So this is where you would hold shift, grab a corner and see with text, I can still stretch it and still squash it. So hold shift and that's going to maintain its proportions. I can get those red guides to line things up. Okay. Uh, if you want to create a copy of something quickly, hold control and drag. Hold control and drag and create a, a duplicate. And this is going to be subheading. And I can use my arrow keys to nudge things. So, so very quickly, I basically did kind of what I did in a, a previous video on creating a flyer. Without this transparency or this semi transparency here that's going on. Uh, it would be quite a bit more busy with the white text there. So I could take this up even more or down. I'm increasing its transparency. And that makes the text much more readable and brings in that color. And I can make that color whatever I want. I can double click into a group and move things inside that group. And when I click out of it, it's still grouped. So that's basically how I manage objects on the on the uh, on the document on the canvas, without having a layers panel. Uh, all right, so this um, oh, let's do one a couple of other things here with this bird here. We uh, we still have the the image options uh, panel open here. To get rid of that, you just click the X to bring it back. You can just click image options, or you can right click on an image and say image options, and it'll bring it back. So we also have uh, two other things, which is brightness. It increases the brightness, kind of like increasing the exposure. So if you have a very dark image, you can't see somebody's face very well, that might help you. Contrast is another one. So this is making more contrast, almost to black and white here as I continue bringing it up. If I bring it down, it's going to make it more gray, less contrast. And anytime I could reset these, so if I've just gotten all crazy, I don't know what's going on, I can just hit reset adjustments and I'll take it back to the original. 
There's lots more things you can do with images. I'll do them in another video. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, one more question here. Do you know anyone else using Drive products for major pro design work? Is Google marketing this functionality? No, not that I know of. Uh, I, I don't. I don't. I don't think either one of those. Uh, I don't know anybody else that's using Google Drive for. Um... Hello. Hey, hey guys. You need. You need help. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, I don't. I don't know um, anybody else who's using that uh, for professional design work. Uh, and no, Google is not marketing this as a professional design tool. I'll talk to you guys more in, in uh, videos to come. Thanks for watching. Dive into Drive.